Hi, my name is Lindsay Ginter. I'm reading for the production of The Quality of Life for the role of Bill. I got a call today from my cousin Jeanette. Uh -huh. I finally sent her a note about Cindy and she's so sorry and sends us all her love. We had a long, long talk. She and her husband are going through their own tragedy right now. You know that big fire out in California a few months ago? No, I don't remember. Yes, you do. Remember I had said to you, oh, I wonder if Jeanette and Neil are affected. No. Honey, we had a fight about it. You started going on about how people shouldn't live next to uncleared brush, and then you started going on about earthquakes and how what fools people in San Francisco were to live on landfill. And then I got mad at you and said you were being a crank, and you said stop being a bleeding heart, and then I didn't talk to you for the rest of the evening. You don't remember that? No. Anyway, their house burned down. It's gone. All gone. Burned down to the chimney. It doesn't compare. They can rebuild. Don't compare it with what we're going through. I'm not comparing Bill. My heart goes out to them, that's all. And if you would let me finish, it gets worse. Neil has cancer. Starting in the prostate, and then it's gone to the rest of his body. It doesn't look good for him. Still doesn't compare. You don't have to compare. It's not a contest, for sweet sake. I was just asking you to listen to the story. Just let me talk. Allow me to tell you about a conversation that I had. Well, go on. We talked about going out there for a visit. What on earth for? Their family. Jeanette and I talked about how crazy it was that all these years we never made the effort to see each other. It, that it shouldn't be just at funerals that we get together. And just because our parents are gone doesn't mean we shouldn't stay in touch. We talked about the fact that she never knew Cindy as the beautiful young woman that she was. I'd like to see them. I can't take off work. Well, we could go on a Friday, come back on a Sunday. Why don't you just go on your own? Because I don't want to travel alone. Not yet, I just can't. Please, would you do this for me? If we go, we're not going to stay with them. Well, of course not. They don't even have a house. Apparently they're living in a yurt. A what? A yurt. It's a kind of Mongolian tent thing. Oh, for gosh sakes. <sighs> Please, Bill. I, th I think it'd be good for us. I I think it'd be good to get away. Let me think about it. I'm sorry, I'm almost done. I do, do what you have to do. Mm. I think I'll go more the lawn. Hello, Jan. Are you here to lecture me, Bill? No. Do you mind if I sit with you for a while? 
Where's Dinah? She's at the hotel. Do you mind if I have a glass of wine? Bottle's right there. Is Neil asleep? He could be. We both need to be alone. <laughs> Hard night, Bill. <laughs> Dino wants to leave me. I could blame this trip. I'd be more than happy to blame you. I'm not interested in that. No, I wouldn't think so. I could blame the man who took my daughter, but he's locked in a cage and I'm never going to be able to get to him. He's in for life, you know. Pleaded insanity, so there's no real retribution there. No watching him breathe his last on the gurney. My daughter didn't believe in such things. She would have asked for mercy for the guy. I just... I just keep asking myself, man, why was that monster allowed to cross my daughter's path? And then my minister sits me down and says, you know, you better not blame God. You know, fair enough. I'm a practical man, but I've always believed that what happens, happens, and you just have to move on. And then my minister points to the book of Job. And, Read this, Bill, and you'll understand that God gives us challenges to test our faith. Are you saying, I'm going to ask him, are you saying that God is responsible for the terrible thing that happened? No, you can't second guess God, no. You just have to trust that he only gives you what, you know, the most that you can handle. Well, Reverend, if that's the case, then you must have got one powerful guy. No, Bill, you don't have that right. No. God wants you to be humbled by your pain. What the hell does he want from me? Does he want me to be a rock of fortitude or not? I build houses. People look to me to put them into something that won't fall down. I mean, would it be their fault if I, I put in a lousy foundation, a basement flooded, and the roof caved in? Are they, are they supposed to put their faith in me and say, oh yeah, Bill, I'll hire you again, sure, yeah, here, let me write you another big fat check while the rain's pounding down on my head. You want to know something, Jim? I don't need hell to be my stopgap. I know what's right, I know what's wrong. I know my own heart and I know what's true. Whoa, sounds like you're jumping the fence to us pagans. Don't flatter yourself, no, I still have my faith. I know there's a God, I just can't believe he's out to punish us. That's a start. That comment I made about Neil's cancer. It wasn't just a comment, Bill. I, I know that. I know that. It was the wrong thing to say. Yeah. I want to apologize. Well, sticks and stones, baby. We both got bigger fish to fry. Yeah. Seems that we do. Dinah thinks our marriage is dead, but she's wrong. If our marriage was dead, that sick bastard would have won. I'm never going to let that happen. Sometimes people have to move on. No, that's your deal, not mine. You broke her heart, you know. She opened up to you. You just cut her loose. She didn't deserve that. She's a tender, loving person. You just kicked her in the gut. I'm sorry for that. I really am. Well, then send her something. Write her a note for sweet sakes. Let her know that you still value her. 
it's the least you can do before you pop your pills or whatever it is you're going to do. I'm not going anywhere, Bill. What do you mean? Neil talk me out of it. Oh, I'm glad to hear that, you know. <laughs> well, <clears throat> you won the contest. Well, I wasn't looking to win anything. Come on. I don't insult my good intentions. Jelly just because I acted like an ass. I'm fond of you. I want you still around. Well, here I am. There you are. Salute. Cheers.